If there is a globin cDNA in the DNA from any of these filters, it's going to be on that filter. I'm going to put that piece of film right on top. I'm going to wait a while, expose in other words, and then after that we go into a dark room basically, and we take the film out, and we develop it. That black spot came from one of those original colonies. So we pick that colony from the original dish, we grow it in a liquid culture, we extract the plasmid DNA, we can do a lot of things to it, the two things that are often done is we sequence it. We find out the sequence of the entire recombinant insert DNA. And then we can use that rather large chunk of globin DNA to screen a genomic library. The key here is that if you think about what we just did, the probe was 17 nucleotides long, and it's being asked to find a 17 nucleotide complement in recombinant cDNAs, and it does so very effectively. Small probes like that will not find clones in a genomic library because it's looking in a much bigger haystack, if you will, for that needle. But if you have a bigger probe, which is uh, several hundred bases long perhaps, that is a complement to a gene in a genomic library, you can pick a clone of an entire gene. Remember that a cDNA is just a portion of the gene that's been transcribed, whereas the entire gene will include lots of other information. If you pick a clone out of the genomic library, it will include things like the region of the promoter, which is not transcribed. It will include perhaps regions of DNA that regulate transcription of the gene. Hence the need to isolate cloned genes, not just the, the cDNA copies.